According to the International Diabetes Federation, over 25 million people worldwide have been living with a type of diabetes that medical professionals didn't officially recognize until April 2025. These patients have been misdiagnosed for decades, often receiving dangerous treatments that made their condition worse instead of better. Yet some populations in developing countries have known about this distinct form of diabetes for generations. Healthcare workers in parts of Africa and Asia have observed young, lean patients with severe diabetes that don't respond like type 1 or type 2 cases. Why did it take so long for the medical world to catch up? Today, we're going to dive into eight shocking facts about type 5 diabetes that explain why this recognition matters for millions of people. Plus, we'll give you the exact differences that separate type 5 from every other diabetes type, so you'll understand why proper diagnosis can literally mean the difference between life and death. This is key because most doctors still don't know how to identify type 5 diabetes, which means patients continue getting the wrong treatments that can cause dangerous blood sugar crashes. If you do enjoy this video, remember to click subscribe and turn notifications on to ensure you see our future videos. Here's something that will blow your mind. Type 5 diabetes doesn't develop because your immune system attacks your pancreas, like type 1, and it has nothing to do with lifestyle choices like type 2. Instead, it develops when chronic malnutrition during childhood permanently damages the pancreas before it can fully develop. Picture this, a child in rural Bangladesh experiences severe malnutrition for months or years during critical growth periods. Their pancreas never develops the capacity to produce adequate insulin. Fast forward to their teenage years or early 20s, and they suddenly develop severe diabetes symptoms. But when doctors test them, they don't fit the typical type 1 or type 2 patterns. This explains why type 5 diabetes primarily affects people in low- and middle-income countries, where childhood malnutrition remains common. The pancreatic damage happens early, but the diabetes symptoms don't appear until years later. The scary part? Over 200 million children under 5 in low-income countries currently suffer from stunting because of malnutrition, which means we're looking at a potential tsunami of type 5 diabetes cases in the coming decades. What makes this even more concerning is that many of these future cases could be prevented with proper childhood nutrition programs. Wait until you hear why the medical community ignored this condition for over 70 years. The World Health Organization actually recognized malnutrition-related diabetes back in 1985. But here's what's interesting. They removed it from their classification system in 1999 because they claimed there wasn't enough evidence supporting this. For the next 26 years, millions of patients with type 5 diabetes were told they had type 1 diabetes instead. Doctors in wealthy countries rarely encountered these cases, so they assumed the condition didn't exist or was just a variation of type 1. Meanwhile, healthcare workers in countries like India, Bangladesh, and parts of sub-Saharan Africa kept seeing the same pattern young, extremely thin patients with severe diabetes who didn't respond to treatment like type 1 patients. These medical professionals published research papers and case studies, but the international medical community largely ignored them. The dismissal of type 5 diabetes represents one of the biggest oversights in modern medicine. It shows how medical knowledge can be biased toward conditions that affect wealthy populations while ignoring diseases that primarily impact the global poor. This oversight cost lives. Patients received inappropriate treatments, experienced dangerous complications, and often died within a year of diagnosis because their condition was so poorly understood. The official recognition in 2025 finally confirms what doctors in developing countries have known for generations. 
But here's what's really shocking about how type 5 diabetes differs from type 1. Most people think all diabetes in young, thin people must be type 1, but that's completely wrong when it comes to type 5. Type 1 diabetes happens when your immune system mistakenly intacts and destroys the insulin-producing cells in your pancreas. It's an autoimmune condition. Type 5 diabetes involves zero autoimmune activity. Instead, the pancreas is simply underdeveloped because of childhood malnutrition. The insulin-producing cells are still there, there just aren't enough of them, and they don't work properly. This difference is huge for treatment. Type 1 diabetics usually need aggressive insulin therapy from diagnosis because their pancreas produces virtually no insulin. Type 5 diabetics often have some insulin production remaining, just not enough. Here's the really important part. Type 5 diabetics don't develop ketosis, even when their blood sugar is dangerously high. Ketosis is that life-threatening condition where your body starts breaking down fat for energy when it can't use sugar. It's a classic sign of type 1 diabetes, but it rarely happens with type 5. This absence of ketosis is actually one of the key diagnostic clues that doctors use to distinguish type 5 from type 1. If you have a young, thin patient with severe diabetes but no ketosis, type 5 should be on the list of possibilities. The lack of autoimmune involvement also means type 5 diabetes might respond to different treatment than type 1, which brings us to our next shocking fact. Unlike type 1 diabetes, which has complex genetic factors, type 5 diabetes follows a much more predictable inheritance pattern. If one parent carries the genetic mutations associated with type 5 diabetes, there's about a 50% chance they'll pass it on to each child. The primary genes involved are TCF2 and HNF1b. These genes control pancreatic development during fetal growth and early childhood. When these genes are mutated, the pancreas doesn't develop its full capacity for insulin production. Here's what makes it really concerning. Many people carrying these genetic mutations don't know it until they have children who develop type 5 diabetes. The parent might have mild symptoms that were never properly diagnosed, or they might have subclinical diabetes that only becomes obvious through genetic testing. This hereditary component means type 5 diabetes can cluster in families, especially in regions where malnutrition is common across generations. A grandmother who experienced childhood malnutrition might pass on damaged genes to her children and grandchildren. The 50% transmission rate is much higher than most other forms of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, for comparison, has only about a 5% chance of being passed from parent to child. Understanding this genetic component is crucial for families planning an early intervention. Families with known type 5 diabetes cases can take extra precautions to ensure proper nutrition during pregnancy and early childhood. But here's where things get really dangerous. The standard diabetes treatments can actually harm type 5 patients. This might be the most shocking fact of all. Giving insulin to type 5 diabetics can be extremely dangerous, even though their blood sugar levels are sky high. Standard diabetes treatment protocols often make type 5 patients worse, not better. Here's why this happens. Type 5 diabetics still produce some insulin naturally, just not enough to handle normal blood sugar levels. When doctors add external insulin on top of this natural production, it can create unpredictable blood sugar swings. Type 5 patients are also extremely sensitive to insulin because their bodies are adapted to functioning with very little of it. A dose of insulin that would be normal for a type 1 diabetic can cause a type 5 diabetic's blood sugar to crash to dangerously low levels. These hypoglycemic episodes can be severe enough to cause seizures, comas, or even death. 
Many type 5 patients have died from insulin overdoses because their doctors didn't recognize that they had a different type of diabetes. The fixed treatment approach focuses on nutritional rehabilitation first. High protein diets, micronutrient supplementation, and gradual weight gain often improve blood sugar control better than insulin therapy. When medications are needed, oral diabetes drugs often work better than insulin for type 5 patients. These medications help the existing pancreatic cells work more efficiently as opposed to overwhelming the system with external insulin. This treatment paradox explains why type 5 diabetics have often had such poor outcomes when they're misdiagnosed as type 1. And speaking of misdiagnosis, you won't believe the geographic bias that's been hiding this whole condition. Type 5 diabetes exposes one of the most glaring examples of healthcare inequality in modern medicine. This condition primarily affects people in Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, and parts of Latin America, regions that have historically been underrepresented in medical research. India alone has over 101 million people with diabetes, and a significant portion of these cases are likely type 5 that have been misclassified. Countries like Bangladesh, Nigeria, and Guatemala have reported unusually high rates of diabetes in young, underweight people that don't fit typical type 1 or type 2 patterns. This geographic concentration of type 5 diabetes correlates directly with regions that have high rates of childhood malnutrition and limited access to advanced medical testing. This creates a vicious cycle. The populations most affected by type 5 diabetes are also the least likely to ever receive proper diagnosis and treatment. Meanwhile, medical research has been dominated by studies conducted in wealthy countries where type 5 diabetes is rare. Most diabetes research focuses on the types of diabetes that affect affluent populations, particularly type 2 diabetes related to obesity and lifestyle factors. This bias means that medical schools in developed countries rarely teach about type 5 diabetes. Even endocrinologists and diabetes specialists in the United States or Europe might never encounter a case during their entire careers. The recognition of type 5 diabetes forces the global medical community to think that their understanding of diabetes has been incomplete and culturally biased. It also highlights the needs for more research funding and medical resources in the regions where type 5 diabetes is most common. But the diagnostic challenges go even deeper than geographic bias. Even when doctors suspect type 5 diabetes, they often can't confirm the diagnosis because the necessary testing isn't available. Proper diagnosis of type 5 diabetes requires genetic testing for mutations in the TCF2 and HNF1B genes, but this testing is expensive and not widely available in the regions where type 5 diabetes is most common. Standard diabetes blood tests don't distinguish between type 1, type 2, and type 5. All three conditions can cause high blood glucose levels, so doctors have to rely on other clinical clues to make the diagnosis. The key diagnostic factors for type 5 diabetes include patient age, typically teens to early 20s, body weight, typically underweight with BMI under 19, absence of ketosis despite high blood sugar, history of childhood malnutrition, and family history of similar diabetes cases. But even experienced doctors can miss these subtle differences. A young, thin patient with diabetes looks exactly like a type 1 case at first glance. It takes careful history taking and clinical suspicion to consider type 5 as a possibility. The lack of standardized diagnostic criteria has been a major problem. Until recently, there wasn't an official definition of type 5 diabetes that doctors could reference. 
different medical centers used different criteria, making it impossible to compare cases or develop consistent treatment protocols. The International Diabetes Federation is now working to establish formal diagnostic guidelines, but it'll take time for these to be implemented worldwide. Many patients currently diagnosed with type 1 diabetes might actually have type 5, but there's no systematic way to identify them without expensive genetic testing. This brings us to the most important point about why official recognition changes everything. The International Diabetes Federation's official recognition of type 5 diabetes in April of 2025 represents more than just a classification change. It opens the floodgates for targeted research, funding, and treatment development. For the first time, pharmaceutical companies can develop drugs specifically for type 5 diabetes patients. Previously, these patients were lumped in with type 1 diabetics for clinical trials, which meant treatments were never optimized for their specific needs. Research institutions can now apply for grants specifically to study type 5 diabetes. This will accelerate the development of better diagnostic tools, treatment protocols, and prevention strategies. The recognition also confirms the experiences of millions of patients who knew their diabetes was different but couldn't get proper answers from their doctors. Patient advocacy groups can now organize around type 5 diabetes as a distinct condition. Medical schools will need to update their curricula to include type 5 diabetes education. New doctors will learn to recognize and treat this condition properly, preventing the diagnostic errors that have plagued patients for decades. International health organizations can develop targeted interventions for the regions most affected by type 5 diabetes. This might include childhood nutrition programs designed to prevent the condition or training programs for healthcare workers in high prevalence areas. The World Health Organization is likely to reinstate malnutrition-related diabetes in their classification system, giving it the official status that it deserves. Most importantly, the recognition creates hope for the 20 to 25 million people worldwide who have been suffering with the condition that the medical world barely acknowledged existed. This official recognition represents a victory for patients, advocates, and healthcare workers in developing countries who never gave up fighting for acknowledgement of type 5 diabetes. Their persistence has finally paid off, and millions of people will develop from better diagnosis and treatment in the years to come. Now that you've learned these surprising facts about type 5 diabetes, you might be curious about the other new developments in the field. Check out our next video, where we reveal the top 10 dangerous foods the U.S. Department of Health just banned. Whether you're in the USA or anywhere else, these changes affect everyone who cares about their blood sugar and metabolic health. Remember to like and subscribe so you can stay updated on diabetes wellness.